Hello, Vorians. Today is Tuesday, the 26th of May. Hope everybody is doing well. My name is Stephen Federal. If you could please, um, the Q&A window is open, by the way, so feel free to go ahead and ask questions while I'm going through this here today. Be a little bit of a shorter call, but want to focus a little more on Q&A, so we'll do that towards the end. So feel free, since the window is open, um, let's do a quick double check to make sure we can see my screen. You should be seeing the risk disclosure screen. And you can hear me okay. They could just type a yes in the Q&A box or the chat box. would be fine. <clears throat> Again, for those of you joining us here, uh, my name is Stephen Federal. I am the firm's risk manager. So let me just uh, pop the chat box up. Okay, guys, looks like we can hear me okay. Good, good. Um, while I'm going through... Uh, so what I'm going to talk about today, just keep in mind, if you have questions and I haven't had a chance to get to questions on Saturday, any of the previous weeks, if you just want to go ahead and type them in, um, I know that some of you sent some questions to me as well. We are in the process of going through um, and have some really exciting things to help everybody do um, much better in the markets with uh, whatever cup software you're using. But um, if you missed the call on Saturday, I highly recommend going into the back office um, and taking a look at this. A bit, it was a bit long. It was over an hour, but we introduced uh, Jesse Kamer on Saturday. Um, Jesse is a superstar, in, um, and he is now an actual coach uh, of Avoria Prime. He's going to be helping me going forward to really drill down into getting these settings straight for accounts of any size, okay? So stay tuned as we fine tune that. And I'm going to be applying those as he is to two new live um, Einstein accounts. But look, let's get into real just quick the risk disclosure. Trading the foreign exchange markets carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Um, do keep in mind that one of my primary goals as a risk manager is to challenge you to put together a trade plan, and put together a risk plan, which is one and the same, it can be done very easily. Um, so that you understand how the settings affect um, the trading in whatever product that you're using or whatever type of software. So as an organization, Avoria Prime does not have any recommended settings. We're not a financial advisory firm. We just license software that users can use however they want at their own risk and discretion. So some software does come with default settings upon initial setup, which users have the ability to customize their settings however they want. And that's really the purpose of these calls beyond looking backwards as a forecast or a um, review of the previous week as sort of your, your guy sitting on top of uh, the financial markets mountain, so to speak, here. Um, I'm trying to dumb it down and, and simplify what's going on so that we can all be profitable and have a little drawdown. That's my primary goal. So with that in mind, Avoria does not have anything to do with the customer's broker account. We don't solicit or take investments. We don't recommend any brokers. So we just license software and sell amazing education. Again, there's a little plug for Daisy Duncan. I know she did her live broadcast yesterday, which was fantastic. Um, so the settings are not company recommended settings. They are essentially the settings that I'm doing on my accounts. So take that as you will. So my mantra through this whole thing is, is trading safely equals happy trading. And if you're new to these calls, I try and do them at Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time here in SoCal um, and Saturday at 10 a.m. as well. So um, this is the mid-week uh, software strategy session. That is my email. If you have any uh, much deeper questions you don't get a chance to ask here, feel free to uh, send this to me. Do keep in mind that a lot of the emails that I'm getting are surrounding things like, hey, you know, I, I want to know about your new changes and your settings and so forth. And we will disclose that to everybody once we get it fine-tuned, uh, which should take about a week. Uh, we're going to be meeting with different coaches to try and fine-tune. Let me switch over here to the other screen. So um, – this is the back office uh, that I have access to. Um, and you can see that we've set up the two new Einstein live accounts. Um, and I've got those accounts uh, getting ready to be set up and, and to um, apply some of the changes we're going to be making to them. 
Um, this is the demo account here. As many of you may have already noticed, um, we have additions to the settings. So the entrance of a remove stop loss from trades, which you see me having highlighted there, and a trading stop loss pips. We'll be talking a little further about this um, as this is a excellent addition to the adjustability of either Einstein or Alexander. So stay tuned on that. We're gonna talk more about that as we begin to bring that into um, focus. The, um, so Mike uh, Einstein's actually done pretty well. It's still trading the um, Euro US dollars you can see here on daily. Uh, it's trading the US dollar JPY daily, uh, the Euro JPY, which is just essentially this ring. Uh, <clears throat> it's, you can see how the performance is done. Um, not a lot going on, but it's good to start the week off in a positive tone from some of the, uh, the brutality that the Euro JPY uh, terrorized <laughs> accounts earlier last week. And, um, you know, I know there's a lot of talk out there in subscriber land about, well, do I turn off a pair? Do I leave one pair running? Um, and I, <clears throat> I think the, the inability of myself just speaking on my own behalf when I was in drawdown, no, I did not have uh, the software trading on Monday. Well, that was just because I just didn't like some of the stuff that I saw. Um, the channel that I have now, actually, I'm going to show before the end of the call. Somebody remind me if I forget that. Make sure you subscribe to our new Telegram channels. If you do not have Telegram, I would highly suggest um, that you uh, download that. They have a really good app. You can download it to the desktop. And um, the channel is called Trade Tracking uh, with Steve Vetterl. And the other channel is called... Um, where is it? Trade tracking with uh, Jesse Kamer. So those are the two channels I would highly suggest you subscribe to because had I had that channel up and running, which we do now, which is great, um, last Monday I could have posted, hey, I have Einstein off. I don't like what I see going on in the markets, which would just be a broad statement. I don't know, maybe would have kept some of you out of drawdown depending upon how fast you caught that news. But the cool thing about the channels now is we have real time um, and I can communicate that to you much faster. So spread the word on that. I mean, I know we have a, a mass load of subscribers and the firm's been exploding, which is great. Um, but it just doesn't seem like I have the participation in subscribers to either of our channels. I mean, I'd like to see those numbers in the multi-thousands. Um, so if you guys could do me a favor and spread the word, just mention to your upload and download folks. Just be like, hey, are you subscribing to the channels? Um, and, and try and get some involvement in that. We can all communicate and all be on sort of the same page. But um, so <clears throat> taking a look at the Forex calendar here. Oh, by the way, before I do that, let me just I have this window open as well. This is the Forex Games Contest Leaders Board in the back office of Glory Prime. As you can see the leaders here. Um, some of the leaders are absolutely killing it, like D.A. Elkin. Um, and uh, AI profits. Hey, good job, guys. I mean, you guys are just bombing it. I think I'm probably going to want to see what those settings are, uh, DAL King. So if you could get those to me, that would be great. <laughs> but uh, our favorite, David's doing well. Um, looks like Carlisle Global's placing in both uh, with Iris. So that's really cool. So it's exciting to see. So if you guys want to um, go to the back office, log in, take a look at the Forex games. See if you can show up at the top of the leaderboard. All right, so bear with me a second here. Let's run some filters. I always like to take out the orange and yellow. If you're trading different currencies, obviously do not uncheck the boxes that I'm unchecked, but I just like to filter them out, see what's going on. Um, as many of you may know, yesterday was a big banking holiday here in the U.S. as well as in Britain. Um, for those trading, the, as I noted in the notes over the weekend in the back office, um, for those that um, are trading the NZD, just know that we have um, financial stability report um, coming out today. At, at, so you might want to um, have the software off if you're doing well trading that ring. Um, just a heads up. Tomorrow, um, 
which is Wednesday. We have nothing um, Thursday. We have preliminary GDP. It's going to be terrible. We all know. Um, and then obviously Friday, Chairman Powell speaks. This particular one is just at Princeton University. So it doesn't look like there's a QA. and a um, A lot of times with these red events, uh, in terms of global news, I, I always like to look to see, especially if it's some sort of central banker uh, that's talking. If there's, if there's any kind of Q&A, um, I typically don't trade that um, just because wild stuff can come out of questions and answers that the market's not anticipating. And, you know, anything that has to do with supporting or not supporting the U.S. dollar could just send the currency markets in tailspin. So I personally prefer... Um, to have the software turn off that it gets more conservative. All right, so those notes, uh, I'm going to get into Q&A pretty quick here. Let me just see if there's anything I want to note. Um, this is the FX Blue. If you're not familiar with this, myfxbook.com and fxblue.com are great ways to link up your accounts. There's videos on how to do this um, and be able to see the analysis inside the account. There's tons of data that shows uh, but the great thing about this is that I focus mostly on, you know, the, just the basic top stats, okay? Is the account positive or negative since I set it up? How long is the history of the account? In this case, it's only been 44 days, which is about the time, time I've been at the helm here. Um, I focus on win percentages. That's why I, I adjusted this chart. So you can just drop this box down, go to trade win percentage. Um, and the key thing is, <clears throat> that recently it's been trending higher. Um, anything personally in trading land that is over a 60% win rate with a very solid risk management and a tight um, plan related to, to drawdowns um, is a killer win rate. Um, and there are some stuff that we'll actually show you guys uh, coming up with different settings um, that have a little bit higher win rates, which is even better. So we touched a little on that. Uh, with some of Jesse's presentation on Saturday, which was fabulous. So the only other thing that I focus on outside of that is um, I want to look at the maximum adverse excursion, essentially what trades went awry. And I'll single those out and actually look at the trade individual, which I'm not going to do here. But you can always pull down all the trades, uh, closed trades, um, especially if something's showing up um, that's just really – crazy outside there um you always want to want to take a look and see what took place could have been related to a news event more than likely um that made it sort of go all out wacky but just focus on win rates focus on the uh, performance there's lots of other ways to dice this data up but as long as you don't have big drawdowns going um related to that um, for those that haven't seen the settings looks like i'm getting a couple of questions surrounding that these are the settings. <clears throat> so I'm going to be making um, some adjustments to the settings and we need to sort of get that hammered out. Um, we're going to be applying them to the two live accounts I've set up. Um, and I want to start essentially from day one with the adjusted settings. Um, so we're, we're sort of peeling through just a mountain of data that I've gotten over the last week and with holidays and me being out of town. Um, it's been a bit delayed, so appreciate your patience and sort of sticking with me on that. And with that said, if you guys got any questions, let's uh, be pop into Q&A. But while I'm doing the q and I'm actually going to run a poll. So if you guys could all pay attention to the screen and vote on the poll. Let's get this launched. Okay, here we go. All right, so the, de the poll is who is running a demo account or a live account. Please be honest. You're fooling nobody but yourself right? So that I can get quality data. Please make sure everybody votes as well. Um, I want to know. Ideally, I'd love to see it both. Why? That tells me that you've spent the time from a risk management standpoint, right? And you understand with um, the demo, you know, what went on, what took place, what happened, uh, rather than just dive in without testing. You know, it's the same thing in F1 racing, which I make a lot of analogies to, you know, you have a, the <clears throat> awesome car to get into and you could certainly race around the track for whatever your favorite team is, Mercedes, Ferrari, whoever. Um, but if you don't know how to operate the car, 
you're going to hit the first wall and your team's going to be out of the race. So I'd like not to see that be the case. All right, so let's peel through some questions here. All righty. <clears throat> right now, Vince, I still recommend 60 minutes before and 60 minutes after for news as far as stop trading. Now, until I, I have seen, <laughs> in all fairness, I have seen some good data um, that recommends running through all news. I'm just not really ready. I've seen some good data. And running all week, <laughs> flying in the face of most of what I've been talking about, right? So I'll, I'll take a closer look at that. We're going to have some executive meetings. We're all sort of collaborating and getting on the same page, especially with a lot of our global directors that have tremendous um, experience in this area like Tyler does. So I value his opinion along with uh, some of our uh, other folks um, that have been peeling through, certainly Jesse and um, – some of our other guys that are participating in the multiple betas we have going on right now. So thank you guys for, I know a lot of you are putting some tremendous work in uh, on those demos. So much appreciated from, uh, from my point. All right. Next question. Yes. So one thing, Don, his question is, can we get the correct settings rolled out for members of accounts of different sizes? Yes. So um, we, I don't know that it's, it's going to be introduced to the group, but I have access to a risk management spreadsheet that's been exceptionally well put together by Jesse. I love it. Um, and it just goes in, puts in all of your inputs, regardless of the size of the account. You could be trading 150 grand, 300 grand, three grand, um, and it'll tell you what all the parameters are. Um, so I'm, we're going to be um, taking a deeper dive in that. So please stay tuned. And thank you for your patience on that. Uh, put your questions, by the way, in Q&A window. Don't put them in chat. Ideally, Joshua, you want to exit the markets um, before Thursday morning. Ideally, I'd like to be out before Thursday morning. Typically, and this is, you know, there's some data, obviously, new data show uh, running through the whole news. But historically, uh, patterns and win rates have not been that favorable on Thursday and Friday. Yes, you can have both an FX Blue and a My FX Book for the same account. 72% win rate is killer. <clears throat> what are significant levels? Greg, you're going to have to uh, to be get a little deeper on that question. Not sure what you're talking about. Let's see. What's the name of the other trade tracker? Are you talking about um, Jesse's trade tracker? Is that what you're asking about, Tom? Can the Telegram channel be made interactive? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll tell you, iPhone user, this is a great question. But the reason I'm laughing at this is that the Telegram channel can't be made in, a, in interactive. Because what would happen is, you know, especially with almost 2,000 subscribers to my trading channel, it would just be, it would take the entire day um, for me to read. And keep in mind, guys, you know, 80, 85, 90% of the other side is my business with my clients here in SoCal that they get my primary focus. Um, it's like a lot of clients. <laughs> so I got to put a lot of time into it. Uh, but you know, I actually thought about doing that and I was um, talked out of it because it would take up the whole day. Sorry. Send me the, um, you can always send me an email if you guys got any in depth question. But just understand your questions to in your email sent to me about settings. Um, we're going to make some adjustments to the settings <clears throat> as this uh, really good data has come in. So stay tuned on that. Okay. So the next question is, and looks like uh, let's end the poll here. And let's uh, share the results with you guys. <clears throat> so not bad. I mean, you, you, many of the, uh, audience here is putting a, a solid effort into having a demo. So I see if I'm understanding this right, if you guys answered this question um, truthfully, um, that you've put over 50% of the people have actually set up a demo account. And there's nothing wrong with having multiple demo accounts, you know? Um, you know, obviously we're, I guess we're, and I don't really know where we stand on that because I've got a couple questions on additional licensing. So 
maybe I'll just default off to management as far as where we stand with um, additional licensing. I don't know the answer to that question at this point. All right, so let me get this other question addressed. Let's make sure I'm sharing this screen. All right, so we're back in the MT4 platform with Einstein running, and the question was asked about total account equity risk, okay? Um, and I seem to have dyslexia on this, <laughs> but the total account equity risk is essentially how much of your account are you willing to risk? Some trades are carried from last week. Shall we close those manually? Um, I, I don't like to step in front of the software and make the statement, which essentially this is asking it to do that I'm smarter than the software. Um, I know a lot of people that pinged me last week actually closed out of um, some of the Euro JPY ring that they were trading, even that currency pair. Um, and it came back and brought a lot of accounts back that um, were in drawdown. So I, I'm just... <clears throat> A month and a half in this position, folks, and you know, with many other individuals much smarter than I on our, our our deep data team, I'm unwilling to um, recommend that you you win and step in front of the software, let it play itself out. Remember, essentially, there's there's four types of trades um, that the software takes. You know, with trend and counter trend um, for both the buy and sell time. So it's hedging itself along the way. What is the actual time the software turns on when you use the setting 23 hour if you are Eastern Standard Time? So let's find the. <clears throat> so this is two hours after the market opens. So down at the bottom here, trading times. I prefer to come in two hours after the market opens. Um, that's where a lot of even some of our best developers and team have the settings on. Um, just because the first two hours is um, completely crazy. But this is hour 23 GMT time. Can we turn off individual pairs from the EA settings rather than turn them all off from auto trading if needed? So this is um, one of the changes that has been agreed to, I guess, for lack of a better term, by the developers and being able to have settings on each individual pair. Um, so stay tuned on that change. You mentioned two. Not sure what that means. Is there any news? I already answered that one. Can changing the lot size higher have a major effect on making more money each week? Um, if so, would it be ideal for starting lot size? So... I don't know how to pronounce your, lat, your first name, but the question was, can changing the lot size higher have a major effect on making more money each week? If so, what would be ideal for starting lot size? So if you're looking at my screen here, we usually recommend a 0.01 per thousand. So if you're trading a 12 grand account, it'd be 0.12. Hopefully that makes sense. Should I keep the trade stop loss at 250 pips? Okay, so this question's about our new um, setting. I don't have enough data to answer this question yet, but the question was, should I keep trade stop loss at 250 pips? Where does the 250 come from? Well, I mean, I can't answer that. It's the vol setting uh, that shows up. You know, as far as adjusting that and all, um, what I would refer to if you choose to go and trade an alternate pair ring, um, no, Jesse's posted a great video on his trading channel that it goes into a little bit of a deeper dive on this, uh, which I'm taking a closer look at. But if you want a more immediate answer than sort of my coming out to the whole organization later in the week on this, um, you can watch his video up on YouTube. You can link to that through his channel. That's we get a goal of 3%. Okay, so Cynthia's question is, last week I had a goal of 3%, but I was at 15% profit. It closed me out of red trades. I'm not sure what you mean by, you mean trades, I guess you were in drawdown. I ended up with a 5% profit. Why not raise the goal percentage? You can. I mean, if you're going to go back up to the screen here and look at the top, 
see the trailing equity start, you can increase that number. Um, it probably should be higher, but just because of the fact that there's been, you know, some craziness in um, the JPY ring, I've decided to keep it at this point um, because I'd rather just get, you know, 1% a week. You know, <laughs> I know a lot of people are like, ah, 1% a week, that's nothing. Uh, but just understand how, how, how great of a return in the long term. Imagine if you got 30% on one third of your wealth for the rest of your life. Think about how good that would be. So individuals globally that have had those kind of returns, they have a B behind their name. They're running hedge funds. All right. Uh, how do we communicate with Jesse Tillman? Don't allow interactions. Stay tuned on that one, Morrow. So the question was, how do we communicate with Jesse if Telegram doesn't allow interaction between users? Um, I'm not sure how he wants to communicate. I know he's been communicating via some really good YouTube videos he shot. Um, the kid is an absolute genius when it comes to data. So <clears throat> I'll have to ask him what he wants to do and uh, talk with management on that. But I do think there's got to be some way to, to sign up to communicate. But, you know, ideally can always come in. Um, and I think they'd get a fair amount of, of requests here to have him on Saturday, maybe answer some Q&A. So if he's cool with that and, and it fits in his schedule. Uh, maybe you can have them on live. I'll ask. Um, so I guess the name is Agretha, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I'm not sure what settings you had on the account. Um, and by the way, for anybody that's raising their hand, I don't really look at hand raising, so just put something in Q&A. <clears throat> Um, I don't know what the settings were. So if you had an account that got blown out in three days, I have to see what the settings are. And if you want, you could send me an email on the settings. Hopefully it's what you see on the screen here. Um, again, there, there's so many factors in there as to why one will have a different performance than another. You know, if you're running two live accounts, then obviously in all the settings are the same. Um, you'd have to compare, you know, all the individual trades of how it executed in each account. Um, which is what I'd recommend. It's kind of a laborious task. Um, but then you also have to look to see what's going on with the broker that you're dealing with. And is there a lot of slippage in the execution? You know, not all brokers globally, folks, are the same. So I cannot publicly recommend a Forex broker. I know a lot of you um, uh, <clears throat> have asked that question of me, uh, but I can promise you the up and down lines of your organization uh, do know some of the best ones for your particular country. Let's see. All right. Let me just jump back to get this question answered to slide. That is the slide with my email address. Do not blast me with questions you have not well thought out. And please make sure I can understand what you're saying. I've gotten a lot of emails where I have no clue um, what they're asking me and the punctuation and the, the word and sentence structure is just a mess. So as you guys can see, I'm pretty anal. Um, and I have a lot of OCD, which my clients love. Um, but at the same time, I can't help you unless you're asking a question um, thoroughly. All right, so let me click these out. Hopefully I'm answering these questions to your satisfaction. Again, the uh, Telegram groups. Um, one thing that is tricky about these Telegram groups, you know what? Are you guys subscribed to, and, and everybody should be subscribed to the main corporate channel. Um, which is just a Foria Prime official. You know, the links we'll put into the other Telegram channels, I'll have the guys running the main. Um, and I think that actually, if you scroll through, there's a lot of really good stuff in here. And uh, but I'll have them post the links to the other two trade channels for Jesse and I. It's 
say, okay, keep it fixed, weekly goal of 3%. So, Tom, just understand with a fixed weekly goal of 3%, which is right here, okay? So if you have the trailing equity turned off, just double-click this window. If you have the fixed weekly goal selected, you can choose whatever you want with the fixed weekly goal. Just understand that once the fixed weekly goal is selected, you know, you've got to click OK, obviously, down here. But you can set this number to whatever you want. You know, set it to something realistic. You know, unless you're trading on just crazy settings on a small time frame, you're shooting for the moon with a higher return, and you understand these settings and the risks that comes along with having them, um, then there's, you know, no problem shooting for a higher fixed weekly goal. But just do understand if this is selected, the trailing equity start is not, it's not live. Okay. Right. Let's see what else here. Where are we? 1031. Okay. Let me just take a few more questions here. So the question was asked, does it work with any currency pair um, the same? The settings all work the same. All the 25 different currency pairs out there in the world, they all trade differently. So we, for the conservative settings, um, have chosen the U.S. dollar and a euro ring uh, with the JPY. <clears throat> uh, because this, especially the euro U.S. dollar, it is the most active. It has the largest volume by far of any currency pair. Now, th the problem that kind of comes with that as Jesse shared with us on Saturday, is that um, consequently it takes less trades, right? Because there's a lot more um, activity <clears throat> in terms of volume, which is always my biggest complaint about Forex is unless you're one of the big um, liquidity providers out there and or the you know 10 plus large banks, you can't see the volume of executed trades, which I far prefer to, um, which you can see. So the question was, what is a moving average period? Um, what I always suggest when somebody asks about that is to just Google it uh, because they can give you the, the whole scientific answer. But essentially just a moving average period is, is just that. <clears throat> it's an average of some type of variable. So I prefer rows to have it at 2% and 1%. You know, if we get some better data and we have a different ring we're trading or a different pair or group of pairs that we're presenting in as Jesse's doing, um, he may have differences on these. But as far as just the conservative part, you know, which I'm sort of in charge as the risk manager of making sure all the subscribers get educated on the very least on what's most important setting up the uh, out of the box or the default settings so you don't get into trouble. Um, right now it's 2%, but I wouldn't have a problem with any subscriber going to three and, you know, have it trail by one. That's okay too. I mean, you could set your trailing equity start to four, but just understand if it gets all the way to three and a half percent, it goes back down to zero. It never even triggered your protection of your profit, right? I have 10K starting lot size so point there should be. Yes. If I have a 10K account, uh, my starting lot size is set to 0 0.03. Should it be 0 0.1? Well, it all depends on your risk, right? There's nothing wrong with having small trades on a large account. It just depends upon what your goal is. What's the risk tolerance? Can you afford to lose this money? Are you shooting for the moon? You know, somebody says, hey, Steve, I'm worth a couple million bucks. I put, you know, 20 grand into... Um, a Forex account, then in, in their particular case, you know, it's risk capital and they probably have no problem losing it. It doesn't mean you start swinging for the fences and taking crazy setting recommendations from your up and down line people. Um, you know, a lot of those questions I got, that almost always was the answer when I asked, where'd you get these settings from? Oh, well, you know, <clears throat> you know, Sally and the upline or whoever told me what these settings were, or Bob and my downline. Um, and, you know, in, when I responded, you know, have either of them ever even been on my calls? And they said, no. <laughs> so that's why you got to spread the word. 
does the weekly performance effect <clears throat> does the weekly performance affect how the software works at all? Well, so the answer to that question is yes and no. So the software, and we're going to get into this once I, uh, or if you guys want to go back to Saturdays, uh, Dressy actually talks about this um, in showing the spreadsheet. So the software will react to um, the account just by taking a deeper level and a more riskier trades as a pile on. That's this max level of max number of levels uh, category right here, which I think we're going to be changing um, to something lower, like a six, uh, because it just allows it to take um, not as deep of a level of trades. If that answers your question. <clears throat> Steve, you mentioned in a question before, 12K means a starting lot size opponent. This is just related. If you only traded one pair, right? If you have three pairs of 12K, then you start each with a point. This is correct. So the question is, <clears throat> um, I the question. I tell you what, Thomas, can you do me a favor? Can you email that question to me? Because I want to double check some data on that before I give you uh, an answer on that. So just send that email to me, please. <clears throat> so the percentage win ratio is the next question. Um, it's just nothing more than that. It's the percentage of winning trades that the software places, either long or short. Remember, you know, remember long is you're, you're betting for the market to go up. If you're long, if you're short, you're betting for the market to go down. And that can be on, you know, any market. You can, you can go long and short Apple computer if you're just trading equities, right? Where can I go to get an explanation on each individual setting? Because I don't know what equity trail and level range. Well, so Sion, we have, um, I shot a video. It was about three minutes long, if I'm not mistaken, um, that we're, um, we're in the process, I guess, of production on and getting it up into the back office that explains the settings inside this window. So stay tuned on that. Christine, these settings are classified as conservative. Absolutely. Yeah, so the Avoria Prime official channel, and then it's called Trade Tracking with Jesse, and then Trade Tracker with me. These are the Telegram channels that uh, you want to subscribe to. So, yes, you're on, uh, you're on point there, Marl. Right, because it was showing the wrong screen. So here's the uh, there's the settings again. <clears throat> so the fixed weekly goal of three percent can be upped. You can make changes to any of these. I just always hesitate to give any um, or agree with anything larger than a two percent um, unless you really have your settings dial in and you truly understand the software. Maybe it's trading on a smaller time frame than this daily time frame we're trading on here. Um, I just have a problem with shooting for the moon because if you were set something like a six percent or a four or something higher than a three, you know, and the market moves up, doesn't even trigger, right? You just you get you get nothing. So I choose to. I don't know that I have a problem with it being on three percent, right? But then again, you still got to move in a, in a pretty decent direction just to get the thing to trigger and protect you. All right. So let me see if I can share this. How to copy and paste from Q&A. <clears throat> Seems like we had a lot of problems over the weekend of people being able to find these channels. And I think what probably needs to happen if it's doable is when somebody sets up an account um, with a bore and you know gets the back office established, um, they should automatically have some sort of way to download Telegram 
uh, and be auto subscribed to those two channels, even know if that's doable, but um, just my suggestion. Um, so Lawrence's question is, have you tested other moving averages for the software, like the 50 MA? If so, how did it perform? Um, I don't know the answer to that because I have not tested that. Um, I would think that with um, some of our exceptionally smart people that are coming out and doing a deep dive, um, and actually here, I just got somebody to allow me to do this. So let me, so right in the, um, the chat room, you guys can see the link that was posted to Jesse's channel. So go click on that right now if you haven't already in the chat. My channel's in there too. So thank you, Marissa, on that. Appreciate it. Jesse's channel for Telegram and mine. They're in the chat box. Thank you. Um, so the question from Mauro. Hey, Mauro, by the way, great questions. <laughs> you guys have been throwing out some great questions at me. Um, is it possible to have a much smaller range between levels uh, on a low volatility pair like the Euro US dollar and higher level range? Um, and here are the level range is right here if you look at my screen. See the range between levels here at 21. Um, you can always play around with this. Um, we're seeing some really good data coming out showing uh, that we're going to be looking at trading on a different group of pairs uh, with a range level uh, much higher than 21, which just means it's taking trades at a much wider range. Um, it's just personal preference. I, mean, I, I choose to... Um, keep the total account equity risk percentage at 60%. <clears throat> it allows the software to, to, to cast a wide net. Um, but we're, our hope is with some revised settings we're going to be working on this week that, you know, we're not essentially risking 60% of the account on drawdown to make money. I have no idea how to share, uh, Courtney, everybody's Q&A on a call. Somebody knows the answer to that, let me know. Yes, if you have a 3,000 account, um, you should really, in my opinion, until you understand, Adrian, how the account trades live, um, I would be probably no higher than a starting lot size of 0 0.03. I don't think it's greedy, Denbo. I'm just saying if you, know, if you want to set it at 5%, I don't necessarily think it's a greedy. It just all depends on how good you are. Um, and how much you understand the settings. All right, I don't want to turn this off. Um, I don't trailing equities right here. Okay. Um, you can drop this trailing equity if you want down to 0.5, right? 0.2 if you want, but you're not casting a very wide net. If it falls back even the slightest, trading's turned off. All right, so let me just um, – so I'm going to go ahead and end webinar. We've blasted through a whole bunch of questions here. Let me just zip through here and see. So everybody, I'm going to go ahead and um, close this webinar down. Before I do, I'm going to give you all one last shot to go into the chat room and click on our two channels. You know, ideally, you want to be subscribed to Avoria Prime, the official corporate channel. That's where all the main corporate stuff comes out, um, as well as uh, Jesse's and my channels. So just keep in mind, my goal for my channel, people can run their channels however they want. That's fine. Uh, my goal for the channel is not to have lots of chit chat and all this going on and motivational stuff. I mean, you guys can get that from somewhere else, right? Um, even as much as I love Brant Cardone and 
Tony Robbins and all those, all their henchmen. I think it's great. Um, you guys can get that motivation from somewhere else. I mean, the bottom line is, is learn and have a positive attitude. I mean, that is the single best, cause I got a lot of questions in here about just advice for, you know, dealing with drawdowns and all that. And that, you know, they are going to come, it's going to happen, you know? Um, as great as we may have these settings, these drawdowns will happen. It's, it's a fact of life in trading. You have to have the ability to deal with it. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to reach for the holy grail in trading. I personally don't think the holy grail exists outside of maybe three or four huge hedge funds in New York. Um, I don't think everybody, anybody else has the holy grail. Um, you know, there's a tremendous amount of ambiguity in trading, especially if you're manually trading. It's never going to be perfect. You just have to execute based upon a set known of factors. You know, and the beautiful thing about Avoria Prime um, and their software and all the new software that's going to be coming down the pike, right? So it's just, so just when you get all this mastered, your head will spin even more with other pieces of software that are coming down the pike that I'm seeing um, that look fantastic as well. So stay tuned on that. Um, but, you know, most of the work is done for you, which is great. Um, but... Uh, you know, because the toughest part in discretionary trading is when to execute the trade, right? You're looking for setups, you're looking for confluence, you're looking for multiple factors to come together, whether it's moving averages or Fibonacci or, you know, some sort of wave analysis, which I think is hokey. Um, but, you know, the bottom line is that most investments that trade on this planet publicly, um, different types of instruments, you know, they trade off of all different types of technical and fundamental factors. Um, and many of them outside of the Forex markets, we can actually see aggregated volume on, which I know I sound like a broken record on because it just annoys me that I cannot see an aggregated executed volume on a particular currency pair. It would be a tremendous amount more insight we could gain uh, if we knew where all the trades were being executed. So with that being said, I wish everybody a great and safe trading week. As uh, I like the new mantra of one of the teams, may the trades be with you. <laughs> so I wish everybody a safe and happy week. If you got any questions, send me an email. Please spread the word about the channels. That way we all can be on the same page. Steve Federal, off the mic. I think